Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Rating the Races. So we're going to have a look at some of the racing on Saturday. Um, premium and Pro members, most of this was in the uh, video I sent on Tuesday, um, but there are a few others that I'm going to talk about. Um, before we get started on that, hopefully some of you were on Under Control at Newbury. Um, the Mayor for Nicky Henderson uh, has just won in a juvenile hurdle. She was very impressive. Uh, she didn't come off the bridle. Um, went off five to four. I highlighted her uh, for the Adonis um, as the one that I was interested in. I made a tweet actually saying Nicky Henderson's number one triumph hurdle horse entered in the Adonis. She didn't actually run in that, um, but she came here at a much easier task and won at five to four. Um, now it's supposedly Aintree the next target. Um, so hopefully you picked up on that. But let's get on with the racing tomorrow. So we'll start off with the Veterans Handicap Chase, where you can see the two I've highlighted that I'm interested in. They are Mr. Malarkey and Cloth Cap. Obviously Cloth Cap has won a Labrick Trophy here. Was it called the Labrick Trophy when it was run? I think so, uh, when he won it. Um, the Hennessy, whatever you want to call it. Um, these two last year ran on this day, and they were actually running in the Grimthorpe at Doncaster. They finished second and third that day. Um, behind under supervision, who goes again. Um, Mr. Malarkey is actually £17 worse off due to the conditions of this race and the handicap marks um, for 24 lengths that day. But Cloth Cap looks, looks like he's regressed to me, whereas at least Mr. Malarkey uh, ran OK last time when he was not beaten that far when he was second. He was second at Cheltenham in April as well. That was his um, second at... Doncaster in the Grimthorpe. So he's had two more seconds since then. Okay, he pulled up on his return. You can kind of forgive that. It was his return. But then recently he did run okay and went second at, where was it? At Exeter. Um, so I think he's the one that's still got a bit of form out of those two. And they probably are the better, best two in the race in terms of um, previous ability even. Um, I think Mr Malarkey retains enough that he can go and uh, go very close here. Let's just have a look at the market for that. Have they loaded it up yet? Where is it? Uh, Newbury 140. I'm just going to throw it onto my other screen. Here we go. So you can see they've gone 7 to 4, Mr. Malarkey. 3 Cyclops, 4 Cloth Cap, or 5s in places. 5 Larry, 11 to 2, De Rasha Counter. Um, yeah, Mr. Malarkey, I think, is the one um, that will take all the beating here. Uh, for Colin Tizard, Joe Tizard, Richard Bandy, Richard Bandy is with now, isn't he? Harry Bannister rides, yeah, I think he'll um, take all of the beating there. Moving on to the 150, um, the more battle hurdle. Now, obviously, if you win this race and go and win at the Cheltenham Festival, you can or you will win a hundred thousand pound bonus. They're both winning this and say the county, they're 50 grand each plus the bonus is worth 200 grand to win the next two races. Um, so you would imagine that there's, there's a few horses here that have been aimed at this race. And with that in mind, you try and have a look at who's still got entries at Cheltenham as well. And I wrote a blog a few weeks ago, or a week ago, when was it? When did I write this blog? Uh, February 22nd. I wrote this blog and there was three in the race that I was interested in. McTeague, Colonel Mustard and Favoir. Now Favoir has not been entered. So that leaves McTeague and Colonel Mustard. Now, Colonel Mustard was third in the county hurdle um, behind State Man and First Street, which is really good form. Um, McTeague is the interesting one, and the, it's not a surprise to see McTeague favourite. McTeague could either win this quite comfortably and then go really short price for all of those races that he's in at Cheltenham, or he could finish mid-division or even worse than that and look really disappointing and, and you realise that actually he's not that good. I'm hoping it's the former. I think he is that good. I thought his um, couple of wins or his win and then um, disappointment but ran well for a long way uh, efforts in France were good efforts. Last time out I think they weren't even trying and probably to try and get a decent handicap mark. Obviously being a four-year-old he gets all of the weight allowances Um so he's he's officially one pound lower than the best rated horse in this race in Colonel Mustard. And there's probably more to come from McTeague because he's so lightly raced. 
So I'm hoping that he um, can run a big race here. And then then it would be um, a question as to what race would he run in at the Cheltenham Festival if he was to win. Now, it's probably out of two for me. The Boodles, because he's so high in the handicap, he wouldn't actually get all of the penalty. Or the Martin Pipe, which are the obvious two. The Martin Pipe was the one I um, went for because he they could use the uh, age allowances again, the wait for age allowance... Um, yeah, and I think, you know, if, if he beats these, he's probably suggesting that he's good enough to beat older horses. So the the Martin Pipe would look the obvious one, in my opinion, um, with the weight allowances that he would be getting. So we'll see what he does. You can see I actually added a couple of videos to this blog um, from Equidia, who uh, are great to watch the French races for and the analysis. I mean, this horse here, that's Saint Donats, who went on to win the Grade 1. Um, so yeah, I, I'm quite keen on McTeague there. He's not the biggest price. Uh, he's fours. You can get four to one about him. I think the fact that the Colonel Mustard's not being really well backed, um, to me suggests that maybe they don't think he's ridiculously well handicapped and he hasn't massively improved. I would have, you know, whoever goes off favour, I think is probably the one who's going to be the biggest, have the biggest chance to complete the double. Now I know that sounds silly, but I think it will be one of those two that go off favourite. Um, and obviously the favourite is normally the one with the best chance of winning the race, uh, based on the odds that is. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm still quite keen on McTeague. Um, I have had a bet on him in the uh, more battle and in the um, Martin Pipe. I also highlighted Cormier because Cormier is rated 136 after winning this off 134. He actually beat Saint Daru um, that day uh, last year, but I just think this might be a bit of a stronger event. I think more trainers have targeted this uh, bonus, um, the more battle bonus. And obviously, um, the last trainer to actually do this double was Emmett Mullins with the shunter. So, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if um, McTeague has been laid out for this race. Moving on to the 205, there is a horse here that I want to talk about that wasn't in my uh, original video uh, earlier in the week, and that is Wizkid. So Wizkid, at this time last year, actually finished, he, he started his 114, if we look here. 1st of March, he won at Catterick. Um, 23rd of March, he won at Ludd, though. And then he went to Aintree and finished 4th. Now, that Aintree was a conditional jockeys race um, at the Grand National Festival. Um, so it was a good race, and I think that's probably the target again this year. I think they'll go here and then end up, hopefully, back in that race at Aintree. Now, he's currently rated um, 122. He finished fourth last year in that race at Aintree of 125. But I think it's been really interesting that Luke's ridden him the last three times, um, probably suggesting that that conditional race is where they're going. Now... I think they'll want to win this en route. I think they'll want to get that um, bit of confidence into the horse and demonstrate that the two-mile trip is the trip he wants. If we actually look at his R figures, you can see he ran a really good race here when he was second over two mile, which would be good enough to beat the whole field, as would this over two mile, as would this over two mile, as would this over two mile. I mean, this one's not that far away, over two mile. He's disappointed when he's stepped up in trip. But his two mile um, form is definitely where he uh, where he's best, um, and at this time of year, specifically last year, he he you know he went on a bit of a run. Um, so I'm hoping that Wizkid can um, get really close here. He's a bigger price than I thought he would be. To be honest, he is. Whoops. He is nine to two at the moment. We will have to see if we can get any other bookmakers to price up shortly. Um, but yeah, I quite like Wizkid at Doncaster. Moving on to Kelso, uh, the the Grade Two um, Bet Three Six Five Premier Novices Hurdle over Two Mile Two. And now it's the trip that I think is very very important to Nemean Lion. I highlighted Nemean Lion um, earlier this week when I said that basically Bet Three Six Five had their prices wrong. Both Nemean Lion and a horse later were far too big. 
um, I'm sure if you back them, you're probably going to get restricted now. Um, but they did leave both both of them a little bit bigger earlier on after the entries were announced or the final declarations. So they were still a bigger price than um, what they sh what they should have been, in my opinion. So Namian Lion, last time out, finished third um, in a decent race. He was third behind um, Tamuras in the Tolworth Hurdle at Sandown. Now, I think the thing for Namian Lion is he came from the flat. He was a, a decent horse on the flat, but he was running up to a mile and six. There's a mile and six there. Now, for me, if you can run well on the flat over a mile and six, you want further than two miles over hurdles. So to be running these figures over two mile, I think that's good form. And I think now he's got another two furlongs. Um, I think that'll there'll be even more to come and that 153.4 can certainly be a 155 which in this race would take a lot of beating um the the original favorite was Ferranilli for Emmett Mullins now I think that's purely based on Emmett Mullins I don't think he's going to be um, as good as some of these in this race and I think they're just running him because they might have uh, they might have a chance, and and almost we've got to send something with McTeague um, to keep him company. And I think Ferranelli has been given that uh, job almost as a company horse, just as much as a a horse with a chance in a race. But I really like Namian Lion here. He is now shortening um, to a correct price, uh, seven to two hundred to thirty favourite. I mean, I think he was eleven to two yesterday, and. Uh, was it or nine to two yesterday, and he was eleven to two when they uh, bet three six five were clearly making a mistake on him. Moving on to the two forty five at uh, Newbury, I've highlighted two in this race purely um, because I want to talk about them. Zanza is a really good horse. I've always been a fan of Zanza. I'm sure if you follow my videos, um, you'll have seen we've had some uh, good wins on him. And we've had some really frustrating runs. We had one earlier this season. He was second on his second start. Uh, we were on at 14s and he finished second. And if he jumped the last when he was absolutely motoring, he would have won. He's obviously gone on to prove that he was ahead of his mark um, or had dropped to a decent mark. But I think the thing with Zanza is he needs the trip. He was always staying on last year in um, two and a half mile handicap chases at Cheltenham. And again, this season, when he, you know, four runs ago over two mile three at Weatherby, he was flying at the finish, but didn't get there. They then stepped him up to two mile six at Newbury, and then last time out it was also two mile seven. He's also ran over three mile at Weatherby. Weatherby, it didn't work, but at Newbury, back at Newbury, over the two mile six, two mile seven trip, he's been very impressive. That's where I think this race doesn't suit. This is only two mile four or two mile three and 187 yards. This for me is not going to be far enough for Zanza. Whereas this is the perfect distance, the perfect course for Paint the Dream. Paint the Dream is three from four at the course and two from two over course and distance. Granted, Zanza is five from six at the course, but this is crucial. He's, he's never run over this course and distance. He doesn't win over this distance. And that, for me, is the difference between Paint the Dream and Zanza and why Paint the Dream should take all the beating here. Paint the Dream is the one who wants this trip. Zanza will be finishing strongly, but hopefully Connor Brace has already gone by then. Um, and I highlighted Paint the Dream earlier this week for our Premium Pro members. He is the favourite and he is continually getting supported. Sorry about all the flicking on my pages. Um, 5 to 2, 11 to 4. Bet 3 to 5 are supposedly going threes, but... Um, good luck getting a bet on with them. Moving on to the 3 o'clock. This was another race at uh, Kelso that the Bet365 had no idea what they were doing. They had Dance with the Wind at 8-1. to one. Um, They've now corrected it a little bit. Let me just quickly show you. They've corrected it a little bit by going fives. Um, but I think that's as big as he wants to be. His effort last time was very good. Um, and he looks quite progressive. He won over course and distance. I think that was uh, a big thing for um, Dance with the Wind. The course and distance win. Um, sorry, the course win. He only won at the course he, over two miles. But I think the interesting thing for him is they started this horse over two and a half mile. They even went up to two miles six. 
um, on his second start in a hurdle race, suggesting that he had a lot of stamina and they thought he was a horse for middle distance to, you know, staying hurdle races. It didn't quite work and they eventually dropped him back to two mile for a handicap hurdle off 108, which he won. Um, he then finished third off 112 a few runs later at Kelso before again winning last time out. It was last time out that he probably just started to show that his real stamina um, staying on strongly towards the end of the race. And I think now is the perfect time to step him up and trip. And it, now that they've got him back, um, they've got him winning races, they've got him knowing how to race, I think this extra trip will certainly suit him. He only went up £4 for his win, and I do think he's going to go very close. I think... Personally, the biggest danger for me is Nell's son. Now, Nell's son actually won on this card card last year in the Premier Novices Hurdle, the two-mile two grade two. I think the fact that he won a grade two last year and he's coming back this year in quite a... Um, just coming back off 135 rather than in the 140s or, or, or even higher than that, I think they'll be a little bit disappointed. I mean, after they went from Kelso, they went to Aintree and he finished fourth in a grade one. That's not bad form. This year, it didn't work when they went um, over fences. They've dropped him back to hurdles. And it was a probably a deeper hurdle than what he's running in here when he ran last time when he was sixth behind Hacker de Place. But there was also Might I, Picar, Punctuation, History Bear. All of them had good chances. Front view was behind... Campron back in 12th I mean that was probably a better race than what he's running in here back to the course that he wins at he's definitely the danger for me um, but hopefully Dance with the Wind can find a bit more now at, back up in trip uh, to a trip that will hopefully suit him um, he is Dance with the Wind is 5s and Nell's son is 13-2 to two. there's a bit of money for Santos Blue they think he's very progressive uh, Enemy Coast Ahead has been highly tried um, and the money is from, I think, from Tony Calvin has tipped him up. The 315 at Doncaster is the um, Grimthorpe. And I've highlighted two here. Under Supervision won this race last year, as I mentioned earlier, beating Mr. Coffee and Cloth Cap. Uh, back down to the same mark. Did look like he was starting to get involved uh, last time out um, over this course and distance. Or over this course, sorry, in the Skybet Chase. Definitely a danger, especially off that mark. And as you know, I do quite like horses that, that win or at this time of year or the time of year of the race. Um, and coming back off the same mark, you have to you have to consider him um, for the race. However, the horse I like, the horse that I think is still progressing and I think needs needs as far as far can go, really. I think he's, he's a good... Um, a good target for like the Midlands National, and that's Does He Know. He won uh, two runs ago at um, Cheltenham, over three miles three and 71 yards. Second and third that day were Eva Oscar and Back on the Lash, both who came back to Cheltenham to win. Eva Oscar in a normal handicap, um, Back on the Lash in a cross country. But he stayed on strongly that day, given away weight, he beat them. And he's got to do a similar sort of thing here. Um, last time out, he was just slightly dropped in distance, um, down to two miles seven at Newbury, when he was comfortably beaten by Zanza and Hitman. But if we look at that race in the, on the whole, are these horses the same level as what he took on there? That was a grade two. He got beat by Hitman, who I think is a grade two horse. He got beat by Zanza who is clearly very well hand, uh, you know, he went up £15, I think, for that run. Fanny and Destravel, Destre El Dorado Allen behind, good horses, whereas none of these in this race are quite that level. I think if he runs a similar race, he can certainly go close, and we kind of suggest that with his 150.8. There's only a couple of runs here uh, from M Maroda that are actually higher than that. Oh, and there's a couple here from Sporting John. But Sporting John... I think his best form comes, uh, although that was over um, fences, I think his best form is on um, softer going and I think over hurdles, although that was over fences when he ran a, a really big race there. Um, so yeah, I, I do like Does He Know. He is, it's not complete, 
I thought he would go off favourite. I still think he'll go off favourite, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, is there any moves? There's a little bit for under supervision. Does he know second favourite at three to one? I'm quite keen on uh, does he know to run a really big race there. The I've got it's not the final one, is it? This is the second to last one. So I've got two that I want to talk about here. Um, in the three twenty five at Newbury now, Black Poppy comes back for this race six pounds higher than when winning it last year. The problem for me for Black Poppy, if you look at these figures. This was winning it here, and we're still not saying it's that good. You know, even though she's only six pounds higher, we didn't rate that race that highly. The horse I'm really watching here is one more for the road. Now, one more for the road could win this, but this is the run that I think is the interesting one. In April, he finished third in the Scottish Champion Hurdle, which is a handicap. Um, off one three, just gonna sh one three six, boy one three six runs here off one thirty. Now, a is this worth winning a ten grand race to potentially go up in the handicap, especially if you win this too impressively, go up in the handicap and and make life harder in the Scottish Champion Hurdle. In my opinion, no. I hope one more for the road finishes second or third, um, probably third. So the handicapper completely ignores him. He goes back to a uh, back to air for that Scottish Champion hurdle off one thirty. If he does, I'll be very very keen on him. Um, yeah, I'd really like him in that uh, Scottish Champion hurdle off one thirty. I don't actually have a selection for the race, um, but I just wanted to highlight that I'll be watching one more for the road. My only concern is these figures here. This one here, 145.6 in March in the Imperial Cup off 137. Interestingly, he finished fourth off 137 in the Imperial Cup last year. I'm surprised of 130, he's not going back there. That's a, that's a real surprise, that one. I'm hoping that means, because they're putting all of their eggs in one basket for the Scottish Champion Hurdle at air. The final horse I wanted to highlight, um, bring your attention to, was Bold Plan, who runs in this race... Uh, for the second time after winning it last year. he, When he won it that day, that was his second win in a run of three. Um, after winning at Market Raisin, he came to Newbury, won at Newbury, then went to Cheltenham in April and won in uh, at Cheltenham as well off 125. So he won off 125, he won off 123 and he won off 120. He runs here off 126, which, you know... Definitely suggests that he could run a, a, a reasonable race here or go very, very close because he's won off a pound higher mark and these were the efforts here, I believe. These efforts here do give him a chance. And he's probably... I mean, it's 10 grand to win here. It's 13 at Cheltenham. There's no reason to like try and get him well handicapped for Cheltenham. I think they'll be trying tomorrow. And in this race back over the course and distances that he's won over, I think he'll run a big race. Um, let's just have a look to see if we can find a price for him. Newbury 210, let's have a look. Newbury 210, bold plan, you can get sevens and I actually don't think that's a bad bet to be honest. I know there's a few progressive horses that Dargiani was um, really highly rated last season, JBY, What's up with you is actually a pound worse with um, Bold Plan for their run at, um, a pound better off, sorry, for their run at Cheltenham when Bold Plan beat What's Up With You by two and a half lengths. Yeah, I don't see any reason why either of them are, are handicapping themselves for Cheltenham, but on the basis that Bold Plan has won here under Isabel Williams, I think she'll run a big race, or they'll run a big race with Isabel riding. So there's some thoughts. Um, as I said, a lot of this was covered uh, on Tuesday for premium and pro members, um, but hopefully we've got a few winners in there uh, for you free members. Thanks for listening.